So let's talk about prepping the system using sysprep. Now before we do, let's talk about the purpose of this. So when we're doing image-based installs or deployments of Windows 10, one of the things we will frequently do is we will create a reference computer. And so we'll take a Windows system and, or we'll take a system, we'll install Windows on it, we'll install any other applications on it, we'll do any other customizations we want to it, and then we will image that system. Now, one of the challenges here is that when we image a system, the system has what's called an SID, or security identifier, and that SID is unique to each computer on the network. And when you image a system, then you try to replicate that, it replicates the SID and that creates a problem. So we need to get rid of that using sysprep. Now before we dive into sysprep, I do want to show you a couple of things here. So we're going to treat this like our reference computer. So I've installed Windows on it and then I'd go through and I'd make any customizations, add any other software I wanted to it, anything like that. Um, ideally this system, the reference system, will be very close hardware-wise to the systems that you are uh, going to apply the image to. So we should have, you know, all of our drivers in place, everything like that. Um, the other thing we can do is we can set up specific items on the desktop or in the documents or something like that. And I want to show you that real quick. So I'm going to go to my file explorer and the C drive. And on the C drive, we have a users folder. And in here, we're going to have a folder for every single user that logs into the system. Now, you see my user here that I'm logged in with is Ansel, and then I have a public fo user folder as well. Now, if I put things in this uh, profile, so I put them on the desktop, I put them in the start menu, whatever, it's only going to be relevant for a user named Ansel that logs into the other system. So if somebody else logs in, they're not going to have those items on the desktop or the start menu or the documents or whatever. So that's where this public folder comes into play. But there's another one here that's hidden that I want to show you. So I'm going to go to view and show hidden items. And now we're going to see a default user. Now, you're going to have the same basic data here. You're going to have desktop documents, downloads, pictures for all three of these users. So this is going to be our full profile for the Ansel user. That's my current user. This one's going to be for a default user, and this one's going to be for a public user. Now, the difference between the two. If I create a new user on the system, what it's going to do is it's going to take everything that's in this default profile, and it's going to copy it over to that other user's profile. So if I want something to show up on every new user that's created, let's say I want to put up a desktop icon on every new user that's created, I would put it in here. So I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm just going to call it sample. But you'll notice when I do that, it doesn't show up on my profile. And the reason it doesn't is because this is only for new users that are created. So if I want it to show up for everyone, including current users, well, I'm going to put it in the public. And so from the public, I can go to the public desktop, public documents, public downloads, whatever. I'm going to go to my public desktop, and in my public desktop, I'm going to create a new folder, and we're going to call this sample. And now you'll see that does show up here, because the desktop that's actually displayed for all the users is going to be a combination of their personal desktop and the uh, public desktop. Let me show you one other thing. I'm going to create another folder here. And I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to click on the right thing here. Another folder here, and I'm going to call it Sample 2. And we'll move it over there because that's annoying me. All right, let me go back to my folder list. So when I go to my folders and go to my C drive and users, when I go to Ansel Desktop, I'm going to see sample 2, but not sample. When I go to my public folder and desktop, I'm going to see sample, but not sample 2. So you'll see that both of them are showing up here because the desktop that's actually displayed is a combination of what's in the public profile and what's in my specific user profile. All right, so why do we go through all of that? Because sometimes you're going to want to put certain things in the documents or on the desktop for all users on your system. 
And especially if we're creating that reference computer that we are then going to image and we're going to deploy that image to multiple computers throughout our network, we may want something to show up on all of those computers. So what we would do is we would put it in either default if I want it to show up for new users or public if I want it to show up for all users. So that's another way that we can kind of customize these systems that we're going to push out. All right, now that I am happy with what I've got, I want to image the computer. Now I'm going to image it. I'm not going to use sysprep to image. I'm going to use DISM or some other tool like that to image. But sysprep gives me the option of preparing this for imaging. And you can run it from either Windows or the command line. But let's go to command line because we've got a couple of more other options here that I want to show you. So it's going to be in c colon backslash windows backslash system32 backslash sysprep. And so I'm going to change the location to there and then dir is going to show me my sysprep.exe file. So to see what my options are, I'm going to type sysprep space forward slash question mark, which is our generic help. And so this will prep the system, and then all of these options talk about how it's going to be prepped and what's going to happen afterwards. So dash quiet means when we use this image, after we capture the image of it. So this is going to prep the system, and then once it's prepped, we're going to flip a switch that says when you deploy this as an image, do it quietly, or don't talk to the user at all. Generalize is going to say remove all the machine-specific information. So when we deploy it on a new image, uh, system, it will come up with a brand new SID. And if we deploy it on 10 new systems, each one will come up with our own brand new unique SID. That gets around that SID problem. The OOBE is the out-of-box experience, so it means it's going to prompt the user for a bunch of information. Um, the reboot, shutdown, quit have to do with what's going to happen after it's done. So the when it's done sysprep, if we do a shutdown, it will turn the computer off for us. If we do a quit, it just stops sysprep. Reboot, it reboots the computer. And then we can set an unattended file name, set specific modes. All right. If I don't do any of that and I just type sysprep, then it's going to pop up with this, which gives the action. So system cleanup action, what do we want to have happen? And so we can either do the out-of-box experience or audit mode. Now audit mode doesn't go through that out-of-box experience. It doesn't generate machine-specific information. What it does is it throws you into a special mode of uh, Windows after it's the image has been applied or the system's been rebooted. That doesn't do all the initial setup. Instead, it leaves it in that state of being generalized so you can make more changes and recapture the image if you want to. And then generalize as a checkbox. And then here are our options, quit, reboot, shutdown. Now you'll notice the so one thing that we can't do here is we can't do a set an unattended XML file. And what we'll do is we'll just put the path where that's going to be. So if you're doing this across the network or something, that unattended file you probably want on a network share. And then you can put the image on a WDS server, Windows Deployment Server, and then you can install that image across the network using WDS and it will use that unattended answer file as long as it has access to it. All right, typically when I'm going to do this, if I'm done with this, I'm going to want to image the system. And so typically what I'm going to do is either quit or shut down. And the reason is if I've got this out-of-box experience thing going on, when I start the system back up, it's going to start that out-of-box experience and it's going to start replicating all of that machine-specific information. So if I quit, then I can just come back and shut this thing down and start the imaging whenever I want. Or if I do a shutdown, I can it'll automatically shut down. Then I'll come back later, boot off of another um, another boot device rather than this hard drive because I don't want it to start you know rebuilding. Uh, I'll boot off that other device and then capture an image that way. In this case, I'm just going to hit quit and then hit OK. Now sysprep runs pretty quickly. You can see it here running the cleanup phase. I'll go ahead and close this because I'm done with it. And it will run fairly quickly. And in this case, remember, I told it to just quit. So when it gets done, it's not really going to say anything. It's just going to quit and we'll be done. 
if I'd done the shutdown or the reboot, obviously we'd see it shut down afterwards. But that's really all that we have to do to run SysPrep. Now remember, we're going to do this after we've gotten our system ready, we've created our reference computer, we've installed our software, we've configured everything, we've added in everything we want. Then we'll go ahead and SysPrep it with the idea of being able to capture and then deploy that image. So that's pretty much all there is to working with SysPrep.